This is a technical, the famous weapon used by every militia rebel army type. Officially a non-standard tactical vehicle or improvised fighting vehicle. Obviously this is inspired by pickup trucks and mostly probably Toyota. Light improvised fighting vehicles can be traced back all the way to World War 1, where we see them first emerge as horse-drawn carts mounted with machine guns. That's the Eastern Front, but on the Western Front the French also pulled their shenanigans, arming four trucks with 37mm guns. We also see this during the Spanish Civil War, with artillery pieces installed on lorries or trucks, along with the addition of improvised armor. That's enough history before the history, let's move on. In today's world, there's two things you associate with every militia rebel group type, the technical and the AK-47. Actually saying it out loud, I'm realizing it could be AKs from any variety. The AK-47 has been outdated for a while now, and the standard is actually the AK-74. For a more complete picture, let's just throw in the RPG. And there you go, that's the makeup of 90% of your typical warlord's army. With the exception of maybe the Ukrainians, you're not going to see modern armies use these. Technicals are budget solutions to the battlefield. It's used by armies that can't get purpose-built vehicles. Technicals as we know them today were first seen on the battlefield in 1975. It's generally believed that the term technical comes from the Somalian civil war in the early 1990s. However, there are historians that argue that the name comes from a Soviet manufacturer called Technico, who mounted weapons to vehicles in the 1980s for the Somali national movement during the Somali land war of independence. There's probably something to say about this earlier period of the modern technical, but I want to get in the meat and bones of today's video, which is the Chadian-Libyan conflict, also known as the Toyota War. In 1983, Libya occupied northern Chad, when Gaddafi refused to recognize the Chadian president's legitimacy. The opposition to the president set up a transitional government of national unity, and this government was militarily supported by Libya. That's how the war kicked off, but this plan was foiled when the French intervened, limiting Libya's expansion to the north, which is luckily the most sparsely populated and most arid part of the country. So that helped to keep civilians out of the fight. This is basically what I mean when I say lucky. Anyway, between 1984 and 1986, there were no heavy clashes between the Chadian forces and the Libyan forces. This brought the Chadian government time to strengthen their position, and the Libyan-backed opposition government during this time suffered from factional infighting. Eight of the 11 factions that would make up the opposition government would splinter off rejoining the government. In 1986, the opposition government finally took charge of their own situation rebelling against Gaddafi, which meant Libya lost its cover for legitimacy of its presence in Chad. Fighting broke out between the Libyan forces and the Chadian rebels. The Chadian president recognized the opportunity to strike, ordering his forces into rebel-held territory, unifying the Chadian rebels with the Chadian government, retaking almost all lost territory and inflicting a heavy defeat on Libya. This final phase of the war is what specifically being referred to as the Toyota War. The 1987 war lost Libya tenth of its army with 7,500 killed and 1.5 billion dollars worth of equipment losses for Libya. The Chadian forces only suffered a thousand deaths in comparison. Before this loss, the Libyans were considered a formidable force. At the opening of 1987, the last year of this war, the Libyans had 8,000 soldiers, 300 tanks, multiple rocket launchers and regular artillery pieces, MI-24 helicopters and 60 combat aircraft. These forces had serious flaws though. Their ground forces weren't prepared for the fight at all. Libya intended to use their air power to back up their allies. Once the allies switched side, Libya had insufficient knowledge of the situation on the ground, effectively turning their garrisons into islands. Gaddafi had feared the coup from his own military, so he avoided professionalizing his army which led to demoralized troops who were also structurally disorganized. For their part, the chance didn't make it any easier, hitting harder and faster than anything Libya could realistically respond to. The Chad's superior knowledge of the terrain apparently included unknown access points to bases that were newly occupied by the Libyan forces. Due to the high mobility of the Chad's, they were able to avoid direct confrontation, fighting with a style of guerrilla hit and run tactics. Gaddafi was stunned by the unexpected defeat. The called to service all these available army reserves, rushing several new battalions into the war. A lot of the Libyan forces abandoned equipment or positions, forcing the Libyan Air Force to fire on friendly targets to avoid capture of equipment. In many cases, it was reported that Libyan soldiers were killed while scattering to avoid fighting by getting caught in their own minefields. Gaddafi became more civil with Chad, because he knew he was facing domestic opposition. France also felt that the war was escalating and didn't want that. So eventually both sides were forced to accept mediation from the African Union. 
Initially, it was believed the ceasefire would be short-lived and war would continue, but the peace held, diplomatic relations were restored, and the International Court of Justice settled the border dispute. And that's the story of the Toyota War and how the technical became a famous weapon of war.